Kia ora, hello and welcome to this edition of Mainland Television News. I'm Phil Hawes. In this bulletin, Lewis Stanton freed from jail again. The TDC wants more out of its investments and we find out about a thought-provoking exhibition at NMIT. Lewis Stanton is out of jail again after a ruling from the Nelson High Court that bail conditions imposed for Stanton's release were too restrictive. The conditions of Stanton's bail included a ban from Nelson's central business district between the hours of 7am and 7.30pm. Lewis Stanton was arrested again on July the 18th on charges of obstructing the footpath and was remanded in custody after refusing to sign a bail bond agreeing to the conditions. But in the High Court earlier this week, Justice McKenzie said the question of whether Lewis Stanton was obstructing the footpath or not was a matter for the District Court to determine on Friday and was not part of the appeal that was being heard at the time. Justice McKenzie also said that Stanton's actions to date were not sufficiently serious to justify banning him from the CBD in the period leading up to his appearance this Friday. Justice McKenzie said that despite the perception that Stanton's protest was not popular in the city, everyone had the right to protest without undue interference. The Tasman District Council has given its support to a proposed Top of the South Accord that was agreed to by the Marlborough District Council earlier this week. A memorandum of understanding between the Tasman District, Marlborough District and Nelson City Council provides the political mandate for the Chief Executives to progress joint purchasing and shared services proposals. The aim of the Accord is to use shared services to achieve three main goals, they say, including improved or more resilient services, value for money and savings and good quality infrastructure, local services and performance of regulatory functions. Tasman and Nelson already share a number of services and while Marlborough is a party to a small number of those shared services, the new agreement to move forward will allow the three local bodies to have more collaboration in sharing services and procurement. Tasman Mayor Richard Kempthorne said such arrangements have proven to assist in the cost effective delivery of essential services to ratepayers. A fire in Richmond on Monday they destroyed a garage and two cars. The Richmond Volunteer Fire Brigade received an emergency call to a Crescent Street property at around quarter to five Monday morning to find the property's owner already using a garden hose to fight the fire. 16 firefighters were on hand to put the fire out in around 25 minutes but not before the blaze had destroyed a garage on the property and its contents including two cars. The fire is not being treated as suspicious. The Tasman District Council is looking for ways to get better returns from its investments, including council-owned forestry, camping grounds, aerodromes and its commercial property portfolio. This week the local body took another step forward to the formation of a commercial subcommittee by outlining the subcommittee's terms of reference. Sub the subcommittee will be charged with identifying and recommending appropriate returns targets and monitoring the council's investments to ensure those targets are being met. The subcommittee will be made up of two elected members and three independent appointed members. Tasman Mayor Richard Kempthorne said the formation of a commercial subcommittee is in recognition of the Council's commitment to prudent financial management on behalf of the district's ratepayers. Richard Kempthorne said that once the terms of reference have been agreed to and the appointment of the external members finalise, it's expected that the subcommittee will have its first meeting by the end of this year. A 28-year-old man who was the subject of an overnight search in the Mai Tai Valley over the weekend walked out of the valley on Sunday morning safe and well and totally unaware that he was regarded as missing. Nelson Search and Rescue were called into the Mai Tai Valley on Saturday night including volunteers on four-wheel motorbikes as well as tracking dogs and spent the night searching for the man who walked out at around 8am. Sergeant John Maxwell of Nelson Police said it was disappointing that so many volunteers had spent all night looking for the man when he had apparently intended to stay in the valley overnight all along. Sergeant John Maxwell said walkers should be reminded to leave clear intentions of their plans before heading into the bush. Port Nelson Limited is upping its environmental investment in the region by agreeing to sponsor Nelson and Tasman's Paper for Trees initiative, a nationwide program that provides schools and preschools with resources to set up paper and cardboard recycling systems. Paper for Trees program manager Kaylee Manson said participating schools and preschools are given green classroom recycling bins, posters and native plants for the school as an incentive to either start or to increase their recycling rates. 
The Paper for Trees program includes nearly 4,000 schools nationwide. Kayleigh Manson said last year's recycling earned schools and preschools over 30,000 native plants to enhance their school grounds. Port Nelson Customer Relations and Business Development spokesman Rob Hawkes said the sponsorship was for a two-year term and would enable Paper for Trees to work more closely with the schools and preschools in the Nelson-Tasman regions. The trees Nelson and Tasman schools earned for their recycling efforts are being delivered in time for Conservation Week. That's between September 9th and 14th this year. Nelsonians will be challenged to think beyond oil at a new exhibition opening at the Nelson Marlborough Institute of Technology's G space gallery tomorrow. The Slick Collaborative Art Exhibition is a joint effort between NMIT tutors Colleen Plank, A.D. Tate and John Irwin, environmental advocate Verena Maida and pupils from St Joseph's Room 11 and Nelson Central Primary School's Room 3. It's the first time primary schools have exhibited in the G-Space Gallery at NMIT's New Arts and Media Building. We took the mainland cameras down to NMIT's G-Space to catch the exhibition being set up and find out more from environmental advocates. Verena Maida. Um, Slick has been a collaboration of different people so I think different people came into it with different motivations. I for myself have been working on the issue of deep sea oil in my capacity as the volunteer coordinator for Greenpeace here in Nelson and I have been organizing uh, events and a couple of protest actions. So the way I met Colleen, who has initiated this project here, is that I was working for her, and she was, it was at the time when uh, the oil rig was out at the Tasman Bay, and she was looking at it from a, more with the eyes of an, uh, of an artist and thinking about it, and I was there organizing protests, and we got talking, and she said, oh, I really would like to um, organize a, an art exhibition t on this topic. And I think, like looking back on my work uh, over the last year, we've done a lot of um, events where you have to think a lot and you know you sort of appeal to people's um, intellect, but you don't really get through. And I think maybe art is also a way of getting through to people and make them think about the issues on another level than just on the intellectual level. So I'm very excited about this. It's a subject that's quite top of mind for Kiwis after the Rena spill, isn't it? And also there's been a couple of incidents around the world that have really brought this issue to the front of the news on a couple of occasions. Do you think people are taking messages on board about oil? I think it, it is getting more that way. Um, when the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico happened, that was the big wake-up call internationally, and that sort of motivated me to do more about it because deep sea oil is moving into New Zealand waters. Um, the government has got a very big agenda to push that. But I think it, the arena oil spill it really has brought it home, and it is not an intellectual exercise anymore. We have seen oil on our beaches, and it was a really small oil spill compared to what happened in the Gulf of Mexico. So, you know... Um, multiply that by 2,000 and you've got what happened there. All right. This looks wonderful. Now, with this display slick, you've had school kids involved locally as well? Yes. Um, we really tried to open up to the local community and it was a natural step for the NMIT, like because some of the people working on slick are tutors at the NMIT, so we wanted to involve the schools that are in the immediate vicinity of the NMIT, Nelson Central School and St. Joseph's School. So we wrote to them and they came on board and uh, yeah, I, I went in and played the oil game with them, which started them off you know, talking about the subject of what is petroleum, what is peak oil, what is climate change and where do we want to be in a hundred years time. And it was really motivating for me, I really like working with kids because they are the future policy makers and the future innovators and they inherit the mess we leave them. So, and they bring in a lot of fun elements. So yeah, we, we worked with the schools and um, the artists gave them input and they gave the artists input and it was really a fun project. Now, this is a multimedia project, there's actually going to be uh, something ha happening on the video screen as well? Yes, yes. So there were like paintings and sculptures and installations but there's also um, a, a video being made by John Irvin and he has um, he's filmed us playing the oil game so he's got footage of the kids going on to that journey of discovering what petroleum is all about. And he's also drilled the internet for um, stills and, and moving images and he's putting it all together into a, a movie which will be displayed in the exhibition. All right. When's the exhibition going to be open, Verena? Uh, it will be open to the public on Wednesday, 1st of August. 
there is an opening on the Tuesday tomorrow. So right. yeah, and I will be holding a, a presentation there called um, Oil Slick or Slick Solutions, and that will also be um, displayed in in the atrium. Like so, if you come to the exhibition, you'll also see that presentation and get the background information. And if you'd like to see the Slick Collaborative Art Exhibition, it is open from the 1st through to the 10th of August between 9am and 5pm at the G-Space Gallery in the Arts and Media Building in NMIT, that's on Nile Street. After the break here on Mainland Television News, a check of the weather word around the region and also we'll have a look at what's coming up around our town. FAV Mobile Solutions are the scooter, walker and wheelchair specialists for the Nelson region. Call in and see the huge range available. Take one for a free test drive and pick up your free booklet guide. They also provide a rescue service if you ever get a puncture or a flat battery. Come in and see Robin and the friendly team at FAV Mobile Solutions in the Richmond Free Car Park opposite the Old Town Hall. The majority of information in our life comes to us through our vision. With only one set of eyes to last our lifetime, it's important that you look after them. For over 20 years, Vizique Harrington Eye Care has led the way in providing the Nelson Tasman region with professional eye care. Our team are committed to providing you and your family with the highest standard of eye care. As part of this commitment, at Vizique Harrington Eye Care, we recommend Crizal lenses. Crizal is a revolutionary lens which repels dust and fingerprints. This means it's easier to clean and stays cleaner longer. Visit us at our Nelson, Richmond and Stoke practices and ask about our Crizal satisfaction guarantee. If you have a digital TV and you're watching Mainland Now, you should be able to switch between the digital and analog TV channels, including Mainland TV. Most digital TVs can switch between the digital and analog TV channels. If you need help tuning into the new digital TV channels, please give us a call. Nelson TV and Video Services, 41 Halifax Street, Miller's Acre Car Park. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. Hi, Gus Bulens of Gustav's Clothing for Men on Trafalgar Street. I'd like to invite all the people of Nelson Tasman and international and local visitors to come and check out our brand new refurbished store which is now chock full of the latest international and New Zealand brands. From France, Lacoste. From the UK, Ben Sherman. RM Williams from Sweden, Gant. From the US, Calvin Klein Jeans. And from New Zealand, Rembrandt suits, jackets and trousers. Cutler, Berlin and snowy fine merino knitwear. So come on into Gustav's on Trafalgar Street and we'll look after you. Want to know where to buy the best heat pump for your needs? At All Seasons Air and Electrical, we supply all the major brands, makes and models, including the Mitsubishi Hypercore. I'm Jim Ward, and I give you my personal guarantee of quality and service. Welcome back. You're watching Mainland Television News. I'm Phil Hawes. Right, let's see what the weather has in store for us for the next day or so. Sing like a bird 
Now time to catch up with what's going on around the region. Here's a favourite for many, Good Vibes 2012. Monday 13th till Sunday the 19th of August. Good Vibes is New Zealand's largest annual skydiving event. Now in its 11th year, it's expected to be even bigger than before. The event annually hosts over 100 visiting sports skydivers that jump from multiple aircraft and create formations in many different disciplines of skydiving. It's formations from flat formations, vertical formations, wingsuit and canopy formations, and it's all there to entertain everybody. It's a fantastic and free spectator sport, so please pop along and enjoy a snack from one of the many yummy snack carts and watch all the wonders that happen. It's 13th to 19th of August, sunrise to sunset every day of the event. It's Skydive Abel Tasman, Hangar 1, 16 College Street in Motueka, and there is plenty of parking. Coming up this Sunday, come along and join in the Marcos Fun Day and 5K Run. Chance to meet the Marcos and also be in to win spot prizes that will include Marcos Kids jerseys and take part in a skills session with the Marcos at the end of the day. Now this is Sunday, August the 5th from 10.30 till 1.30 and it's all happening at Trafalgar Park. Why Marama Community Gardens are holding General Working Bees alternate Sundays from the 29th of July. They'll happen between 2 and 4 p.m. You can join in the gardening work and learn from knowledgeable organic gardeners with more than 30 years of experience. Also a chance to socialise and share a hot drink afterwards. Also they have composting working bees every third Wednesday between 10 a.m. and 12.30. You can help make the compost for the gardens and learn more about the layers and tips for success with compost. Like to know more, head to the Waimanama Gardens website. And Victory Community Centre is offering Nanakra, some of which include knitting, crochet and stitching, and they invite participants to share or bring along a project. It's on each Wednesday at the Victory Community Centre from 12.30 till 2.45, and there is also coffee available, Pomeroy's coffee, available for $2 a cup. And don't forget that long lunch is on at Sports House as, as part of the Olympics coverage with some high profile local Olympians speaking. Local Olympian Jeff Rackley will MC the lunch. This is happening tomorrow. Sports House, 12 o'clock till 1.30. Spaces are limited. So if there is any left, uh, get on to the email and email Rita Merriman. That's rita.m at sporttasman.org.nz or phone them on 03 923 2311. That is this edition of Mainland Television News. Thanks very much for joining us. On behalf of the team here, wishing you a safe and enjoyable evening. I'm Phil Hawes for Mainland Television News. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Nelson Tire Center. Great prices, great service. Buy your own Bryford trailer. All types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries. In the center of Mapua is a magical shop called Tessa Mays with a whole lot of attitude. You will see bags from Italy and France. Jewelry from Israel, beautiful quilts from Kashmir, Angora throws, furniture and cushions. Wonderful products from all over the world and New Zealand made. The customers are saying they could stay all day. Call out and see the friendly staff at Tessa Mays, the village centre, Mapua, open seven days. Mandy Computing welcomes you to our new location at 124 Vanguard Street in Nelson. We still offer an extensive product range of computer hardware and software. We supply, install and service, along with support contracts. We have over 30 years of expert advice for home and business customers. Come and see Murray, Steve, Fraser and Denise. Give us a call on 546 8045. Mandy Computing. We have megabytes of experience. up another three gold medals, padding its place at the top of the gold medal count. Yesterday, no injuries are reported after the UN says its mission head in Syria came under attack.
Greece's new coalition government resumes talks on the country's controversial budget cuts. And a power grid in northern India crashes on Monday, forcing hospitals and airports into backup power. Hello and welcome to this news update. I'm Chang Jun in Beijing. On day three of the London Olympics, a total of 12 gold medals were dished out. China took three golds, bringing the total to nine. The first gold medal today came in the synchronized men's 10-meter platform. The pair Cao Yuan and Zhang Yanchuan took the gold with a score of 486.78 after six dives. Cao and Zhang, aged 17 and 18, were diving at their first Olympics. In weightlifting, China's Li Xueying won a second weightlifting gold, breaking two Olympic records to take the women's 58-kilogram weight division. The 22-year-old snatched 108 kilograms and registered a total of 246 kilograms, surpassing the previous Olympic record of 244 kilograms. Li also tied the clean and jerk Olympic record of 138 kilograms, Lee's success earned China its third consecutive gold in the Olympic women's 58-kilogram category. In the men's artistic gymnastics team event, China took the day's third gold medal with a total score of just under 276 points. The team performed extremely well during the final without a single major mistake. China has won the last five world titles and now has gone eight years without losing at a major competition. In the pool, China's Olympic champion Sun Yang and his longtime South Korean rival Park Tae Hwan shared silver medals at an enticing 200 meter freestyle race. Sun was just crowned an Olympic champion two days ago in the 400 meter freestyle. He was the first male Chinese swimmer to claim an Olympic gold. And in the women's individual epi, China's Sun Yue Jie took the bronze. Andrew Pui, CCTV. Now for more on the London Games, we are now joined by our correspondent Wang Dong. Wang Dong, China still tops the tally on the third day competition with nine gold medals. Do you think China will be able to keep this momentum in the coming days? Uh, absolutely. Uh, as you just mentioned, nine gold medals are already under China's belt. So far, there hasn't been a day gone by without China bagging in some goals. Really good news. And they are heading towards the right direction on the right track. And as China initially said before the Olympics, they certainly would like to keep this momentum going. They would like to remain as one of the powerhouses in the first tier. And rightfully so. So far, so good. Back to you. Mm -hmm. And some media have doubted young Chinese swimmer Ye Shen's early times. How have people in the UK reacted to such a report? Well, you know, this has been uh, sort of like uh, speculating uh, ever since her victory the other day by shattering the world record and grabbing her first Olympic gold medal. Uh, it's sort of like, uh, you know, appalling. And uh, to me, uh, although some local British media use the word her record and also the enhancement of her performance, for example, uh, was they used the word, let me quote, disturbing and unbelievable. Uh, on the other hand, we find it very disturbed as well. I mean, in a sense, um, we feel that way disturbed that uh, they will even uh, presume her being guilty before proven, uh, you know, uh, uh, in other words, assuming her guilty before proven innocent. That is totally wrong. That doesn't even, you know, apply to their theory in the uh, Western society either. Um, what I'm trying to say is that uh, up to this point, as uh, Ye herself came out to say today, she's been tested so many times. She's been tested clean and the Chinese delegation is definitely behind her. And she said the best way to answer all these rumors or to shatter them is to perform even better tomorrow in her forte that is the uh, women's 200 meter uh, individual medley and I think that you know she has a shot for another go tomorrow so we shall see back to you all right and are there many people still discussing the spectacular opening of the Olympics as Britons were so proud of the event 
<laughs> Absolutely, a lot of them st are still talking about this, you know, unforgettable uh, uh, moment and also the uh, something they'd be proud of uh, for the for most Britons, really. And uh, one thing today actually uh, seemed to be very interesting, if I may, is that uh, uh, remember the uh, the Queen uh, who actually jumped out of the uh, helicopter and parachuted to the ground. Of course, that, that was not the real Queen AJ uh, ninety now. That was done by a stuntman uh, named Gary uh, Connery. Uh, Gary actually came out to be with the public today, revealing his secrecy, of course, by telling people that he really enjoyed what he did. And when he was uh, given this assignment, he was so nervous under tremendous pressure. However, he delivered the message, and he did very well. And of course, um, on the lighter note, he was saying that he was not particularly amused, although he was joking that he was not given the out outfit of the Queens eventually after the performance but uh, credit to him he really did a fantastic job incidentally one more note is that actually today the British Prime Minister David Cameron took the tube to uh, come to the main stadium to show people that the uh, public transportation here in London is fantastic and I personally feel it is really true uh, the transportation is even getting better and better very impressive it's glad to know that Back to you again. That's good to hear, Wang Dong. Thank you very much. That's our reporter Wang Dong reporting live from London. Now for a wrap up of the third day competition, let's now take a look at the current medal tally. The London Organizing Committee says thousands of game tickets have been made available to the general public. Over the first two days of the games, even popular sold-out events witnessed empty seats. To solve this problem and to ensure empty seats are filled, LOCOG made the decision to release more tickets. Around 3,000 tickets were put back into the pot for sale and were sold within a day. British Prime Minister David Cameron also talked about the availability of game tickets. He spoke about the controversy over empty seats at Olympic venues while visiting so the Olympic watching? Park. Um, I haven't seen anything yet. You've been... It is difficult because some of the seats are reserved not by the sponsors, not by politicians. They're reserved um, by the, the, the governing bodies of some of the sports, and so they have to be made available. But I think that we can do better on this, and I think you'll see fewer empty seats and more people getting to see these fantastic sporting events. Well, the first London rush hour of the Olympic Games has come and gone without a hitch. Earlier fears of travel chaos proved unfounded on Monday morning as Olympic spectators mingled with commuters heading for work with few problems reported for London's transport network. Transport officials have been warning travelers to brace for potential delays on roads and subways on the first working day of the Olympics. E events have been taking place across London once again, from the Olympic Park in the east to Wimbledon and Wembley in the west. But the widely anticipated transport gridlock failed to materialize, with both commuters and spectators reporting a busy but smooth journey. I haven't had any problems. There's been a person at every place that I've asked to help me, and they've been polite and they've been constructive and they've made it easy. I think I'd, I'd only been worried about delays because the information available has been excellent, both in terms of the Transport for London website, general publicity in the newspapers, handouts that we've had at uh, Stratford for the past three weeks about adjusting journeys and that has been fantastic. It's, it's really been excellent. Are you looking for a local printer? The Copy Press in Stoke has practically everything you might need. We are specialists in layouts and design work. Whether you need promotional material, business cards, laminating, binding, laser and digital copying, including copying your photographs or printing your digital photos. We also print short book runs. For all your printing needs, come and see the team at the Copy Press in Stoke.